Obviously, you heard the news yesterday about Verso closing, and we're directing people that are looking for new jobs to go to everythingpointsier.com to our job listing. So our best wishes to, to all those folks and what happens there. We did have two ribbon cuttings recently, one for the Century Curling Club in, in Plover and one for D1 Fitness. So we're opening up the community in a safe uh, way. And of course, we're all getting used to Zoom meetings. We're starting some Zoombrid meetings, a uh, combination of Zoom and live hybrid. And uh, so we're testing that as a new, new tool to use. We're excited about that. And uh, at the end of the month, Tomorrow River Business Association down in Amherst is having a wine walk. And again, practicing very safe uh, and healthy means of uh, trying to get people slowly back out into the community. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back to you, Karen. Thanks, Dad. Okay, Erin Way from TDS is here and she is going to be working on the PowerPoint slides for us this morning, but Erin, could you introduce our expert panel this morning? Sure thing. So thank you for joining us for this um, presentation. We hope we hope to teach you some more about fiber, get you some get answers to your questions. Um, we have about an hour today uh, for the first 45 minutes or so. We'd like to cover who we are, our network, uh, high speed fiber, I'm sorry, high speed internet and fiber 101. Um, we'll talk about what's happening next in your community. Um, as Todd said, please feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, he'll try to field those for us. And there may be some things that we're going to get to in a slide or two, so we might ask you just to hold for a second. Um, we have a TDS swag bag as kind of a door prize, a thank you for giving up some of your time today, which includes some TDS branded merchandise and also a $100 Visa gift card so you can support a local business. If we don't get to your question, we'll have some options for you to reach out to us after the presentation. Um, we have one email to uh, reach the panel at and we'll make sure your question gets to the appropriate presenter. And today's presenters are, I don't know if you guys want to give a wave when um, I say your name, but Chuck Beatty, our field services manager, um, he works out of a west, uh, warehouse in the Weston area. Um, and field services, those are the folks who come out and do installs. David Butterfield is our right of entry manager. He works with um, property owners at MDUs and MTUs to get those wired up for service. John Deegan is our manager of outside plant engineering and construction. So um, these are the folks who plan the build and work with our contractors to make sure the network comes together and works properly. Ashley Heil is our field marketing manager. You've probably seen Ashley out and about at events in the Stevens Point and Wausau area. Steve Jakubiak, manager of network construction. Um, he works with John Deegan uh, kind of in the, in the same realm of uh, making sure our network functions for you. Nick Crambule is our commercial sales manager. Corey Pierce, also uh, commercial sales. Um, you've probably seen Corey out and about. He is in this market um, to stop into your business, talk to you about solutions, that type of thing. My name's Erin Way. I'm the marketing manager for um, Wisconsin out of territory projects. So anything um, fiber overbuilding in Wisconsin. By now you've probably heard a little bit about TDS. So I'll run through this real quick. Um, we are owned by Telephone Data Systems, Inc. That's our parent company. Our parent company is on the Fortune 1000 list. That's a reflection of the financial strength, combined financial strength of our companies. So US Cellular, which everyone has been familiar with, I'm certain. Um, TDS Telecommunications LLC, which is the unit you're speaking with today. We're part of TDS Telecom. One Neck IT Solutions, which does kind of major IT solutions for large enterprise businesses and Subtle Strauss, which is a um, printing company. They also do like swag pieces for marketing, um, large scale, large format printing. Um, if you stop in the TDS retail store, they've done um, the wall art and those graphic features there. So we're a family run publicly traded company. Um, TDS has been family owned for our entire 50 years of existence. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary in 2019. And today we have uh, more than 1.2 million connections nationwide, around 2,700 employees nationwide. That number has probably increased slightly, especially in the last year or so. 
We're offering some of the fastest inter speed, internet speeds in the country. Um, our kind of major initiative right now is building fiber, bringing fiber to communities like yours. Um, we're also bringing faster broadband internet to rural America. Um, we work through with the government through the CAF projects and things like that. Extending fiber deeper into our existing network. Um, we have some existing copper plant, as we call it. Uh, so kind of traditional phone lines and DSL in like the Medford area um, and Mosley area, which is being upgraded for the most part to fiber now. So I'll turn it over to Ashley to talk about some of the ways that we're a community partner. Oh, thank you, Erin. So local communities are the core in which we continue to be successful here at TDS. Um, what's awesome is annually TDS provides each employee with 16 hours of paid time off to go ahead and volunteer uh, in the communities that we live and serve. Uh, together as a company, we've spent more than 50,000 hours uh, that we've donated within our communities volunteering, which is cool. Um, as a vital part of the communities we serve, we have proudly donated monetary and in-kind uh, donations to a variety of different organizations uh, in central Wisconsin and throughout the nation and the communities we serve. A few of the organizations here in Portage County that we work with include Portage County, uh, the Girl Scouts, the Humane Society, Portage County, um, Boys and Girls, we have a little farmers here, I'm trying to be able to get back uh, to others, and then we partner with a variety of high schools, uh, local sports teams, restaurants. You might have seen us at some coffee shops or some of the uh, nearby restaurants. You might see us in the future at some of those. Uh, so we like to partner with all sorts of local businesses um, and organizations here. We also participate in the Stevens Point Farmers Market, and then in other years, uh, if they if they. Um, DBS and many other activities, so it just kind of depends. We're in abnormal times, so you can see if we do a lot of sort of things right now during uh, COVID 19. Other than that, our employees also are given $200 annually. They can direct um, the funds to any charitable organization they would like to. We do a community golf outing. We get to raise uh, $20,000. So kind of pivoting off of what Ashley was talking about, the entire community benefits from fiber. Um, fiber optic technology, of course, is tomorrow's technology today. There's no limit at limit to what fiber can do really at this time. Um, we'll talk later in the presentation about how the, um, the equipment at the ends of the fiber network may change, but the fiber delivery mechanism itself is the thing right now. There's nothing better than it. There's no technology following that at this point. Um, residential customers can enjoy speeds up to one gig um, and up to 10 gigs commercially through dedicated fiber access. Fiber greatly expands bandwidth capability. Um, fiber cables carry loads of information thousands of times faster than conventional technology like DSL and coax that we're maybe familiar with or using today. Um, Fiber is also extremely reliable. It's made out of glass, so it's virtually immune to interference. It doesn't falter under harsh weather conditions. I know last night um, we had some huge storms and I typically have very good coax internet at my home and it was not going particularly well. Um, security, it's nearly impossible to tap into fiber lines. Um, I, when I read that line, I always think of a hacker movie where somebody's like opened that box of network cables and they're tapping in. Um, that's virtually impossible with fiber due to just the structure of the, of the fiber itself. Fiber increases home values. Um, as much as 3.1%, um, according to some surveys, that's about $6,000 for a typical home. And we talked about a little bit about future proof, fiber future proof. Um, it easily carries today's services, data, voice, and video. There's plenty of room. When we talk about room, we're kind of talking about bandwidth. There's so much more capacity available in the fiber infrastructure that we're using today.
So I'll give it over to Steve. Um, he's going to talk about much more technical aspects than you want to hear me try to muddle through. And we do have a couple questions coming up for you all if you want to respond to in the chat. It's um, more for fun than anything. There are no prizes. You will not be graded. All right. Thanks, Aaron. <clears throat> My name is Steve Kubiak, uh, manager of uh, network construction. Just going to go over a few slides here with some of this stuff. So appreciate everybody on the call. Um, like Aaron said, we had a couple questions up for, um, first, just for fun. Um, the first one is, is fiber a green technology? Yes or no? And I don't know. Aaron, did you want me to just kind of answer that now or later? All right. Well, I will just answer it. And if somebody got it right, that's great. But fiber is a green technology um, due to its reduced energy consumption compared to other connection types. Um, basically, it's sending a, a flash of light across your fiber um, instead of an electrical signal, which means less, uh, less um, uh, power means less carbon or output. Um, the next question is, who sent the first wireless message using light? Um, that one is a little not obvious, but um, we all know that Alexander Graham Bell sent the first uh, wireless message using light, and it was called a photophone. Um, and basically using light instead of electricity. Um, what is fiber? Fiber optic cable is a strand of glass that, you, that is used to carry light signals, um, transmission of high-speed data, which includes access to internet, ethernet, voice, and video services. Um, moving on to the next, uh, next screen, uh, slide, um, talk about our network. Um, and uh, what is a network? Um, and then bringing our network to our community and then uh, field services and benefits. So another question we had out there is how many miles of fiber um, power the US internet today? Um, and that's quite large, um, 113,000 miles. And then how fast is internet? Um, fiber is fast as 99.7% speed of light. So it is moving very fast, which gives us the great connections and which um, helps us offer the speeds that we offer today when you get up to one gig service, um, you know, 100 meg service, 50 meg, that stuff moves pretty quick and you have a less of a shortage in, in your connection time. Um, going to the next slide. Um, this is our network, kind of a, a stick diagram of our, of our network throughout the country. Um, this kind of shows all of our connectivity between the huge hubs of like Denver, Chicago, Seattle, LA, New York. Um, some of this is our own fiber. Some of it is leased fiber through other providers. And um, basically connections to our tier one IP transport provides. It provides steady network coverage throughout the core locations like I just mentioned um, before. Um, and we use the um, Nokia and Cisco routers, which is the industry leading technology for high speed availability and scalability. Going on to the next slide. Um, we use TDS uh, uses 374 different providers. Um, consisting of over 1,472 peering sessions maintained across the US. So this um, makes our network faster, more efficient, um, and better data transfer rates. Um, we are connected by 10 different public peering um, uh, fabrics, including Seattle Internet Exchange, um, a core site in LA, and a core site in Denver. Also one in Chicago. And then we have um, our main um, internet exchange in Madison. And then we've got some major um, connections in Minneapolis as well, Atlanta, New York. Um, yeah, 
All right, we'll get to the next slide. Um, and that goes into Nick and Corey. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Uh, my name is Corey Pierce. I'm the senior account executive uh, for the Stevens Point and Wausau areas. I just want to go over a couple of things uh, on why to make the switch to fiber internet. Um, first of all, the main thing is all your cloud technologies will function better. Um, as Steve was mentioning, the upload speeds that we offer uh, just cause these new technologies to function the way they're supposed to function. Uh, webinars and online meetings are clear and clean. Uh, you know, like this, just to expect better um, uh, when we go forward with uh, fiber services in the area. Um, expectations are also different nowadays. Everybody expects light speed service uh, as far as your customers go. And uh, we can offer that as far as uh, what you project um, from your company, which is why also your technology is a reflection of your company. Um, these companies nowadays wanna project uh, the best image they can and the best service they can. Um, and we're gonna offer that in the um, service delivery aspect of, of the technology part, um, give you the best um, avenue to function and move forward with the new technology that's available out there. Um, fiber has been available for a long time. It's been used by the vital services uh, for major corporations and hospitals to function. Um, now it's gonna be available for everybody out there from small businesses to at-home businesses, uh, mid-sized businesses, they can really take advantage of the reasons that they have used it for such a long time. Um, basically, that's it uh, as far as that goes. Um, on the next slide, uh, we have a few reasons of why to make the switch to TDS. Um, locally, we're with you all the way. So I'm right here, I live in Wausau. Uh, if you wanna switch to our services, I will come meet with you. Uh, we'll lay out a game plan of what you're looking for uh, now and in the future. Um, we'll get an idea together and uh, we'll move forward on that. And, um, you know, the service after the install takes part before the install too. Uh, we put you in contact with one person that guides you through the installation process, gives you all your details, sets up your time and date. Um, and then they are also with you after the install, um, either with a team of professionals that we have dedicated for your industry or even a certain individual that we assign to your location um, that will be with you if you need anything done, um, ads, subtracts, issues, or just general questions that you may have that pop up throughout the day. Um, and finally, why to make the switch to us? Uh, don't take our word for it, take everybody else. There's a lot of online testimonials uh, about how we do the best job with our managed phone services. Uh, our day-to-day -day services on small to medium-sized businesses um, and dedicated fiber uh, services as well. So yeah, really, I would like you guys to check that out. Um, these are kind of the business solutions that we have to offer in the area. Um, we have high-speed internet access up to one gig. Uh, that's for your small to medium-sized businesses on what we call our pond passive optical network. Uh, as far as the large businesses go, we have dedicated internet access up to 10 gig available. Uh, so we can go as fast as you need to go uh, to supply you with whatever services you may need. Um, as far as voice services go, we have all services available. Um, regular analog lines, uh, SIP, PRI, um, voice over IP. Uh, we have a hosted service that's top of the line service. Um, uh, includes local and long distance features and phone handsets. Uh, we have a ability to connect multiple locations together with our Metro Ethernet, um, which will be a high speed internet connection between uh, locations. And uh, we also have TDS TV for businesses now, so we can cover all aspects. If you do have a lobby TV and you need something there, uh, we can take care of you on that aspect, um, even up to some bar and restaurant packaging. So um, yeah, we really have everything you need to offer uh, as far as the internet goes and the high speed upload is just a really the key to this whole thing. Uh, gives everybody much more flexibility when it comes to what they do on their day-to-day -day basis in a business. So, um, this is our managed IP product. Um, this has really worked well for us during this uh, time of uncertainty. Uh, we've all been on this platform throughout TDS uh, before the pandemic hit. And when it did hit, um, we were able to basically bring the service with us and um, be able to work remotely um, right away and very effectively too. 
um, which was a big deal for us uh, as far as internally and just being comfortable and being able to move forward and work uh, the way we needed to work to get things done. A lot of customers have service with us already and they expected a lot of things. Uh, we were able to make those moves and help them upgrade systems, get workers home, uh, and just add phones if they needed to, power supplies, whatever they needed. Um, so this phone service has been great. It's a, basically a managed product that we install that carries you from start to finish. We install it, we manage it for you. Uh, there's easy access, we train everybody, and it's, uh, it's cross-platform, so we can put it anywhere in the country if you have a location. Even that's not in a TDS footprint, we can put it there if needed. Um, so that's a great product. I have a lot more information on it if you're interested. Uh, just shoot us a question uh, to the email at the end and we will get back to you right away uh, with any more information or details you may be looking for on our business products. Aaron, do you want me to take this too? I can handle this part. Um, what's what's coming next? I'll just handle it. Um, basically, we have construction continues in your community. Um, we have neighborhood thresholds that are to be met. Basically, these are the little neighborhoods that we work throughout uh, with our direct sales teams and myself uh, to find um, and coordinate the areas together to get those construction services to continue out. Uh, we're doing the construction through all seasons. Uh, seasons and um, the installations have already begun. Uh, we have some active customers already in Stevens Point, uh, which for the most part, uh, I think like 70 to 80% will be activated this year, so. All right, um, thanks, Corey. I can take over from here, so. Um, Basically, uh, building this fiber network um, outside plant construction, or what we typically call OSP, um, which is outside plant, and then we add the C to the end for construction. Um, what to expect during construction is the conduit and cable placement. So you'll see our construction crews um, out there, which they've been there for about a year as of Monday, I believe it was, since we started and broke ground. Um, you know, we, we place conduit in the ground first, um, place our pedestals and or handholds, um, fiber cable gets placed in that conduit, splicing takes place, and then uh, basically every single resident and or business has access to that uh, fiber network. Uh, we do and did construction during the winter, um, this past winter, and there will probably be some more this winter. Um, it does slow down quite a bit, um, just be due to frost and other winter concerns of plowing and snow. So we try to limit our construction to more of the splicing um, activities in the winter, but we still do the construction, uh, which is the directional drilling and aerial construction as well. Um, the original um, design of Stevens Point had a lot of aerial construction, but we have since kind of backed off on that um, due to um, just different um, obstacles in dealing with um, actually attaching to the um, existing poles. And so there will be a lot more of the actual buried construction um, in Stevens Point, which is actually good for us because you can kind of control your timeline more. Um, with aerial construction, you have to go through a whole bunch of hoops of make ready and uh, making sure the poles are strong enough to hold our cable and the weight and, and et cetera. So, um, We'll be doing a little more of the underground construction. Um, yard restoration, um, that's always a big um, discussion point with our construction contractors, inspectors, and everybody we have in the field. Um, of course, there are cha more challenges in the winter because dirt you, you know, excavate, you know, might be frozen, and then it's not going to go back into our excavation pits and stuff exactly the same as it would if it was during the summer months. So restoration is a little bit more different, uh, difficult in the winter. Um, there might be less of it in the winter, but during the summer, it's kind of the same challenge just because we have a lot more of it and a lot more to deal with um, during the summer months. So um, our crews are out there actively trying to do the restoration as, as fast as they can 
um, to limit the amount of um, restoration calls we get from, from customers. Um, <clears throat> the construction door hangers that you see here, um, we, um, before the pandemic, we were going door to door and hanging these on every customer's um, front door or back door and um, typically trying to get ahead of the construction crews to hang these on, the, on, on everybody's door just to make sure they knew that we were coming through. And um, since the pandemic, we've kind of gone to the next slide, which is the postcard. And so now we work with, uh, my team works with Aaron and we try to get a complete mailing list of the area we're gonna be in, you know, a few weeks ahead of time and get these mailers out to people. And I think these actually work a little bit better because I, I don't know if people necessarily see something on their door and pay attention to it. They might glance at it and throw it out and, or it gets blown away in the wind, you never know. But when we actually do these mailers, it seems like we're getting a lot more feedback with the 800 number that we provide. So I think this has been a, a, a lot better um, step uh, for us. Um, and then this one is, it looks like the more of the business one. So um, this one is going to the businesses um, when we are going to door to door. So um, the next one, um, if everybody isn't too familiar, you know, we have to get all the existing locates or utilities in the field located. And that is done by USIC, private utilities, um, cities, um, so on and so forth. So um, there's multiple different colors that are out there and um, you know that tells us what's in the ground. So red is typically your electric, yellow is gas, orange is communications, <clears throat> blue is water, um, green is sewer, white is proposed, and then pink is a, a kind of a temporary survey or a survey of land type of thing. So when we, um, before construction, we will go out and place our white proposed flags um, in the area to make sure we're going to fit um, in that right away where we're going to construct. Um, this is just a picture of a yard that shows all the different type of equipment that we use. The big orange uh, reels are the inner duct that we placed in the ground. Um, behind that you'll see a whole bunch of handles. Those aren't the ones we're using in Stevens Point. These are quite large on here. So um, but that just kind of so, shows a stack of handholds. Um, behind that, there's some reels of fiber optic cable. And then beyond that, it looks like some crates of, I'm not sure what that is off that head, pedestals possibly. Um, so, so yeah, this shows a lot of the different inventory that we have to keep and use and uh, monitor with our um, construction folks uh, and our contractor. Um, next one just shows a couple different um, scenarios of construction. So we've got a, a directional drill rig there, which is um, um, pushes the pipe under the ground first, and you'll see what that tail looks like there by the pedestal. And then we hook up the duct to that and pull the duct back through the ground. And then our fiber gets pulled into the um, uh, duct after that. And this one will swing over the truck as it's on the more of the drop side or field service side. Right. Uh, hello. Um, my name is Chuck Beatty. I'm the field service manager for the Wassa and Stevens Point exchanges. Um, I'm sure what you're most concerned about now is how we get service to your building. So uh, between me and uh, David, we'll talk about uh, the next step after construction, which is bringing that fiber optic drop uh, to your building and how we service the fiber within the building as well. Um, so if we were in person, I'd probably bring a, a fiber optic drop to show you and pass around. Um, just to give you a little idea what it is, it's, you know, it's, it's a piece of glass about the size of your human hair. And I just say it's surrounded by layers of protection. So it's, it's much larger than that, although it's still, you know, fairly small. Um, as you saw in the previous slide, uh, boring is one of the options that we have for getting that fiber in the ground and to the building. 
in this picture, you're seeing a, a trencher just putting um, a slit in the ground and the, the drop being put at the, the base of it. Uh, the method we choose could just be, have a lot to do with whether there's a driveway we have to cross, a parking lot, um, or some other obstacle, we may end up using one method versus another. Uh, let's go to the next slide. All right, I'm just gonna briefly touch on this, but um, what we really do during the time of the drop installation is we're gonna coordinate a time to come out to your property, uh, look not only inside the building to see how we're going to get to your equipment room or uh, maybe a server rack, but also then how are we gonna get the drop to the building, what obstacles are in the way. And, um, and we actually kind of come up with a plan. We submit that plan to our drop coordination team and they submit that to our our drop contractor uh, to bury to the location that um, you know we we spell out. So let's go one more slide here. Um, this can be uh, just what you're seeing on the left there is a pedestal. Um, that is the size of the drop we use. Um, there's a connection there. Um, of where the drop meets maybe uh, um, the main fiber. Uh, and then on the right, you're seeing, this is just a house insulation, installation, but um, our box is located on the left. It's actually a, a copper box in this picture, but um, primarily what you're gonna see is a tube that goes up into our box, and then we're gonna make some sort of entry into your building. So we always do mount a box outside, or it's very rare that we would, just go directly in. Um, we call this a slack box. This is where our drop will meet the, the fiber that um, goes into your building. And I don't think you see that in the picture here, but let's go one more slide here. And let's talk about, uh, I'm gonna hand this over to David here shortly. Um, but like you said, at this time, um, we are bringing the fiber to the building at our cost and we are actually trying to get to your suite as well at our cost. So I will hand it over to David to talk about a little bit about right of entry and the rest of the stuff we do in your building. Great, thank you, Chuck. My name is David, I've been with TDS for uh, a number of years. What I wanted to really talk about in this part is uh, we've, we've we spoke about bringing the network up and down the street and then from the street to your building, well, now what's the next step? It's actually getting it from that side of your building into each suite. And so I wanna speak about this as far as two things is if it's a commercial building, it's into each suite. If it's an apartment building into each different apartments on there. We would be putting this, just a simple picture of a fiber jack the size of a regular uh, wall electrical outlet. We would be putting one of these in each of the suites in each of the apartments. And we look at this as if we're building out a fiber network, we're talking about it's a pure fiber network all the way from your suite, this jack, all the way back to the street, the street back to a central office, all the way back to TDS and internet connections. So uh, it never touches copper along the way. It is a pure fiber optic. So uh, that's also what you're getting. Our network doesn't work until we get this fiber all the way into your suite. So we would like then certainly to bring this into every individual suite, every individual apartment. As you can imagine, if we have an installation crew, you don't bring in a crew to set up a number of ladders, et cetera, into an attic or crawl space just to install one unit. We do the whole building. Now, what uh, the second bullet point talks about, well, who pays for that? It's a certain number of dollars per unit and all this other network as it backed up, the other gentleman spoke about. We cover the labor, we cover the fiber, the jacks, the splice kits, et cetera. That's all on our cost. And again, we're gonna say is the network is not built until it's built from end to end. So that's really why we're making that investment all the way is to take care of that and it takes it all off of your plate. The third bullet point talks about right of entry. It's a, it's a two page agreement and I boiled it down there in those few words is you the building owner, whether it be for commercial or whether it be for an apartment building, you are providing TDS permission basically is to say, sure, you can work on my land, you can work inside my building in order to do these fiber pieces all the way end to end. 
So those are the things that we work with. If you want to really talk about your cost, it really is any coordination you might have getting us into a certain room, et cetera, uh, but there's no labor side as far as uh, you have to do any work or paying for any of these pieces. You as a tenant simply pay for the internet, TV, phone services you use, not all this work in the background to get it ready. And the last piece Aaron talked about early on is, if you uh, owner of the building and if you wish to put in your website to say we are a fiber optic uh, built or provided building, and again, this is another option. It doesn't mean you have to be with TDS. We would love to have a business, certainly from everybody, but we're building this in and making it an option for you. So just because we're building doesn't mean you have to turn off every other service in there. We are just saying is we wanna make this a great, not just another, but a great other service to provide for your building. So those are the main things I like to just say. People understand the value of fiber as you would advertise that again as a building owner. You might have some people saying if I have my choices between one building or another or a resident for an apartment of one building or another, high speed internet as we know right now, very important. So thank you and I'll help answer questions later on as you need. Thanks. I apologize. I lost my ability to speak for a moment. Um, we're all probably very familiar with the build area now as we've been in Stevens Point for um, nearly a year. So you can always go to our website, tdsfiber.com, to check on the progress for your neighborhood, um, meaning the number of registrations and um, commercial contracts signed or business contracts signed um, to get to that neighborhood threshold and that type of thing. You can also see the most up-to-date information we have on launch dates. Um, we do um, send emails to registered customers and also businesses with signed contracts when there is a delay. Fortunately, unfortunately, we don't bother you when it's good news. Um, in the event that your area is launching early, we don't email you again um, about the date. We just start contacting you about scheduling your install and setting things up from that, more from that perspective. Um, we're proud and happy and thrilled to have service available to over a thousand addresses in Stevens Point at this time with more coming um, every two weeks or so in other areas launching throughout the summer. So we are just thrilled about that. Um, it looks like we're very much on schedule. So we'd like to open it up for any questions before we do our drawing. Do we have any questions that have come in through the chat? Aaron, Aaron I'll ask a question. Um, what, what, what's your plan for build out in other parts of Portage County or central Wisconsin outside of uh, Point Proper? Sure, so right now as part of the out of territory project and that's um, kind of an internal term, but the tedious fiber stuff you see around. Um, so Stevens Point is first. Uh, we're start starting work and work has begun, I should say, in Cronwetter, Schofield, Weston, and um, Rothschild and Wassa uh, are on the kind of latter end of that. We also have fiber deeper and that's um, our internal term again, sorry, we get so bogged down with what we call things every day. Um, we're putting more fiber in our existing networks and that would be Mosley, Medford, um, Auburndale and Junction City, I believe are actually completed. So there's a lot going on kind of in the general area in Portage County and then um, into Marathon County. Beyond that, I don't know. Um, I don't know where we're going next, um, but the We've seen in other communities when there is, like in the Dane County communities we've completed, when there are new suburbs or thing, or not, not suburbs, sorry, subdivisions popping up, um, it makes sense to serve them as well um, when they're within kind of the city limits and things like that, new construction. I guess I'll ask another one since I've got the, the <laughs> mic open and, and whether or not you're the person to ask, answer this or maybe there's, you know, not a great, not a great answer right now, but Obviously, the the uh, the COVID virus impacting people working remotely, that certainly has impacted service to more rural areas and where people are 
uh, or they're working from home that may not have that great a service. So generally, have you guys seen uh, any sort of a any sort of a change or uptick, or, or how are you looking out the next three, six, nine, twelve months? You know, as a business, addressing what probably will be more remote workers as as we come out of COVID. Um, I, is someone else on the panel maybe better uh, suited to answer that? I know that we've been able to keep up with increased demand, but I'm thinking maybe somebody else can speak better to that than I can. I can take it uh, for Todd, at least uh, partially here. <clears throat> with our services, like some of the stuff that we were talking about with the managed IP service um, <clears throat> and the new trunking nowadays, People can take a phone home if they have our managed IP phone service, like let's say an office within Stevens Point or, or anywhere near there. Um, they can take a phone home with them and just hook up to their uh, regular, even if it's DSL internet, um, and they can usually function on office type basis out of their home uh, with that phone. Uh, it also has an app on your cell phone. So if you have to use cell phone data out where you're at, say in a situation where you had to move out way out where there was nothing, um, you could use your cell phone to function as an office line as well. So uh, at TDS, which was really attractive to me is that we built in a lot of this stuff for the future uh, to make it available. And, um, and, and these services will function on, on a minimal connection if needed. You know, I guess if you have to put it out in that situation, you can, uh, which is the nice part. You know, uh, obviously the faster the better, but it's available. If you had to take a phone home with you, you can take it home and hook it up to your DSL internet and it would function. So uh, it gives us a little bit more flexibility. Um, and I know the rural push as well, uh, I think, and I don't know Ash, uh, Ashley or Aaron can speak to this, but uh, some, of the, some of the rural push as well, getting faster internet to the rural areas is, is helping as well, you know, even a little bit faster DSL, so. Yeah, in some of those cases it might not be one gig fiber access, but it's definitely, you know, even going from, five meg DSL to 20 meg DSL is a huge difference and kind of allows for some of those things um, like working from home, video conferencing, things like that. Um, our managed IP product has been really amazing for me. One of the things I love about it is not only can you get calls that would be coming into your work phone, you can also call out as if you were using your work phone. Um, my, my, phone num my work phone number is out and about everywhere in the world, and I don't necessarily want to share my personal cell phone number with everyone, um, but it's you know absolutely fine having my work number out there. It's just nice to be able to return calls and also have it show up on caller ID as your office number. Great, thanks. Well, if we don't have any more questions, we can go over to maybe one of the most exciting slides of the day. Um, we just as a thank you for spending your morning with us or a bit of your morning with us. Um, we're offering a fun door prize or we hope it's fun. Um, a TDS swag bag, so there'll be some branded uh, TDS gear in there. Um, those lovely acrylic tumbr tumblers, which are nice for um, keeping your drink from sweating if you're out on the patio and some other TDS branded merchandise, and then also a $100 Visa gift card. You can treat yourself while also supporting a local business. And I'll give the screen um, back to Karen so we can do the, the wheel. All right. All right, so I have everyone's name that registered. So if someone is not present, we will pick another winner. Can everyone see the wheel? Yep. Joe. I'm still here and watching. <laughs> well, congratulations to you. Thanks, you guys. Joel, nice presentation. It's been really nice working with you guys in town. Joel, I didn't rig that one either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We will get that sent to you. We'll contact you. Um, I'll contact you after the presentation to get your preferred mailing address, and we'll just get it sent to your house or business address for the most convenience. Um, 
we had talked about a slide with our contact information on it, and I'll just pop that back up for a quick sec. Um, I hope. Don't lose it now. So our website is um, probably the best, best place in the world to go for more information. Also, you can email us questions at tdsfiber at tdstelecom.com. Um, that box is monitored by the marketing team, my team, and um, we'll, be for we'll forward questions out to the appropriate presenter if you have specific questions about something that was talked about today, or just really anything. We will work to get you an answer. Um, sometimes there's maybe a 24, 48 hour delay getting back to you just because we're in marketing. We don't know necessarily everything about everything. We know just enough about everything to get us in trouble, but we want to get you the right answer. So sometimes if you don't mind waiting two days, we can get you the good information. And also sometimes the more complex the problem, the longer it takes to get a solution. So, but we really want to work with you to get you what you need. Um, it's really important to us and we know it's important to you too. Thank you, Erin. Thank you again to TDS for your sponsorship of this program, to the expert panel for presenting this morning, and Joel, our lucky winner. So we appreciate everyone being here. Our next business exchange is scheduled for July 8th, and it'll be sponsored by WAOW TV9. Um, Tara from their offices will be our guest speaker, and it is entitled Marketing Manners, the who, what, when, where, and why of advertising. So watch for more details to come. Everyone have a great day, and again, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, all. Have a good day.